Hi, my name is M Hashmi. I'm the founder of Rising Girl, a charity that wants to help girls rise above the many obstacles that they may face in life, such as forced marriage, honour-based violence and domestic violence. We want them to stay in school, we want them to get an education, we want them to rise and become amazing women. And we want to help girls in the third world get back into school so they can rise out of poverty and into prosperity. So one of the things is I really want to start a business and I want to know what would be the best business structure for a charity so we can fund the charity some of the profit can go back into the charity and that we can become self-sufficient um, one of my uh, ambitions is to start a premium sweet treat brand uh, to outsource thank you hi I'm Rosie Ginde and I'm the founder of Miss Macaroon this week we have our first week of so sent Q&A and we've got M Hashmi from Rising Girl asking what the best company structure might be for her charity um, to get some funding in. So I can speak from my experience. Uh, we run a community interest company um, called Miss Macaroon and I set it up eight years ago. So in actuality, we've got our product that we make, uh, which is a business in itself, and we have our social impact, which is actually providing training and employment for long-term unemployed young people. And at this stage of the business for M, um, it's just her and some trustees. Uh, nobody's being paid to be within the business. Um, so you've got limited resources like I had in the beginning. Um, so you have to be sure that you've got the passion and the resources to run two separate businesses. Um, if you don't, I would say it may not be the best way forward to get funding through setting up a social enterprise to put money into your charity. Um, if you do have that passion and commitment and you've got those resources, then um, I think it's a great idea that you're looking to outsource production of your premium food product um, as your background is as a journalist. Um, I trained to be a pastry chef and I built my skills. I knew I wanted to set up a food social enterprise. So I had a little bit of experience um, actually working in the food industry and doing some training from my teaching days. So for me, it was all about upskilling. Even with all of that kind of experience, I still made huge mistakes and wasted quite a bit of time and quite a bit of money. So I think it's really important to surround yourself with the right people um, that can help you to achieve what you need to achieve. Um, and on to, in terms of uh, setting up the food social enterprise, I think really test your market and make sure that there is demand for your product. Hi, Em, this is Servan from Ogunte. First of all, well done for setting up your structure, Rising Girl, to educate, inspire and help girls rise globally. Your key objective is to raise funds for Rising Girl and you've identified the profit reinvesting model as the way forward. What I'm hearing here is uh, that your core skills are journalism and galvanizing people through your writing. And I'm also hearing that you are on your way to take care of not just one, but two organizations, the charity Rising Girl and a food business. So there are a few household social businesses that use the profit reinvesting model. And those I'm thinking of redirect part or all their profits to a, an already existing charity. For instance, Belu Water, 100% of Belu Water's profit go to fund Water Aid's work. Uh, there's also Elvis and Cressa, a company that started by saving decommissioned fire hose from landfill. And you know that 50% of their profits from the fire hose collection are donated to the existing organization, the Firefighters Charity. So here's my take. I would simplify your structure and your way of working and flip the model over. Find an already fully functioning and profitable food company. They offer their operations and their existing structure uh, their, um, and their know-how. They would and find one who could be happy to partner with you and create a specific branch involving some of the girls themselves, for instance. And if profits are generating, they can support your charity and the media work around it. Now, keep it simple. This is the, to summarize. Keep it simple. Work with an already existing food company. Involve the girls as much as you can through a variety of activities in that food business and you grow the marketing activities through your writing. I hope it helps. Hi there, my name's Kieran. I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager at Baloo Water. Just to jump straight into answering your question, uh, perhaps unhelpfully, there's not really one correct answer to this. So you should definitely explore a number of different options before deciding. 
Uh, at the last count, in fact, uh, there are over 30 different ways that you could structure a social enterprise, with models ranging from the more traditional, like a company limited by shares, to a community interest company, which is one of the more common structures for social enterprises. To tell you a bit about our experience, Baloo trades as a limited company with profit shares owned by the Baloo Foundation, which is a registered charity, uh, and they receive all of our profits. The trustees of the Baloo Foundation uh, agreed to enter into a partnership model with Baloo Water Limited and WaterAid, whereby all the profits from the company are passed directly to WaterAid. This asset lock, as it's often called, really works for us and our belief that there is a better way of doing business and also our values because it means the profits or the sale of our business can only really benefit those uh, in water poverty. And because we are very much a business, not a charity, with 100% of our revenues coming from trading alone. We also think the asset lock is one of the purest forms a social enterprise can take in many ways. Um, because it removes any doubt about the intent of your company mission uh, from a future perspective. Of course, this model isn't for everyone, uh, but we definitely think it's one that you should consider and take a look at. So I guess my parting advice to you would be to say that there are some fantastic resources on company structures out there, including Social Enterprise UK and School for Social Entrepreneurs websites. They have tons of information about the pros and the cons of various types uh, and where to get further help. It might also be worth, if possible, um, getting some pro bono legal advice before making your final decision. But either way, it sounds like a really exciting development for Rising Girls. So best of luck on whatever you decide.